Good day, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on risk management best practices. Today we're going to be talking about business continuity concepts, and then we're going to conclude with a discussion on fault tolerance. I have a fair amount of ground to cover, not a whole lot of time, so let's go ahead and begin this session. I am going to begin by talking about business continuity concepts. And before I begin talking about those continuity concepts, let's talk about best practices. A best practice is a technique or methodology that consistently returns superior results over another technique or methodology. Best practices can be standardized across an entire industry, a single company, or an individual. Best practices can also be customized to fit any given situation. The creation of a business continuity plan, or BCP, is a best practice that should be done within every organization. A BCP is a sub-element of a disaster recovery plan, or DRP. The BCP utilizes a business impact analysis to determine the impact of down or lost systems through the use of risk assessment techniques. The business impact analysis will help to determine which functions or systems are critical to the continuity of operations. Once identified, steps may be taken to reduce or mitigate risks to those assets. Critical system and component identification is vital to any BCP. If the loss of a system or component would result in significant lost revenue or in a safety situation, it is determined to be a critical system or a component. These are often determined to be a single point of failure. A single point of failure is when the failure of a single device or component can bring the entire system down or have a disproportionate impact on operations. Single points of failure are most often mitigated by implementing redundancy. That's using multiple duplicate systems that immediately take over when a failure occurs. In some situations, single points of failure may be mitigated through high availability techniques. It's a similar concept to redundancy, but it involves data instead of systems. Part of any BCP is succession planning. It's the process of ensuring that if a key person, as in someone in a leadership position, to the organization is lost, that there are personnel who can step into the position right away, even if it is only on an interim basis. Then there's IT contingency planning. It's preparation of a recovery plan to be used when something fails or goes wrong within an IT system. It's very similar to a succession plan, but it's for IT. All business continuity plans should be tested on a regular basis. That means all of the elements of the BCP should be thoroughly tested before they are fully implemented and trusted. Tabletop exercises should be periodically conducted to ensure that the BCP is still valid. With tabletop exercises, the team responsible for the business continuity plan gathers and reviews every aspect of the BCP to determine if anything is missing and to review everyone's responsibilities during a disaster event. Now let's move on to fault tolerance. Building fault tolerance into IT systems is a main tactic used to remove single points of failure and to ensure high availability of data. Using a single server or other piece of hardware to run and maintain critical business functions represents a huge risk. If that server were to fail, it would have a severe impact on the operations of the organization. Fault tolerance is the process of putting systems and processes in place to reduce the impact of the failure of any single system. It can also be used to mitigate against the loss of a group of systems. Let's discuss server fault tolerance. This mainly involves the use of clustering, which is taking a single server's responsibilities and spreading them across multiple servers. In this situation, the duplicate servers are all called nodes. 
the active node is responsible for ensuring that the other nodes contain current copies of the data or processes. If a single node fails, operations continue uninterrupted. This also has the advantage of allowing for load balancing. As all the nodes contain current information, during peak periods the workload may be spread out among the various nodes. The cluster may be contained within a single facility or it may be geographically dispersed. Geographic distribution has the added benefit of protecting against natural disasters taking out the whole cluster. Hard drive fault tolerance is mainly achieved through the implementation of RAID. That's a redundant array of independent disks. RAID may be used to increase performance or it may be used for fault tolerance or it could be implemented to both improve performance and fault tolerance. But remember, not all implementations of RAID involve fault tolerance. So let's talk about the different types of RAID. There's RAID 0, which is also called disk striping. Data is striped across two or more disks, which leads to an increase in performance, but RAID 0 is not fault tolerant. Then there's RAID 1, which is also called disk mirroring. Data is duplicated across two or more disks, which does lead to fault tolerance, but it does not lead to an increase in performance. To achieve both an increase in performance and fault tolerance, you may want to implement RAID 5. This is also called disk striping with parity. Data is striped across multiple disks, three or more, along with a parity bit. Now this is fault tolerance and it has performance that's close to that of RAID 0, but not quite. If you have the resources for it, you should consider RAID 10, which can also be called RAID 1 plus 0. Now this is a stripe of mirrors. It requires four or more disks as it includes a mirror set and a stripe set. Now RAID 10 has the best performance and is highly fault tolerant. That concludes this session on risk management best practices. We began by talking about business continuity concepts and we concluded with a brief discussion on fault tolerance. On behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session and I hope you watch another one soon.